Hello guys, and welcome to my channel. Due to YouTube copyright infringement, we only use one picture with voiceover. Thank you for understanding. If you love history and biographies, please leave a like and a sub. Let's start the video. Antony van Leeuwenhoek, born October 24, 1632, Delft, Netherlands, died August 26, 1723, Delft, Dutch microscopist who was the first to observe bacteria and protozoa. His researches on lower animals refuted the doctrine of spontaneous generation, and his observations helped lay the foundations for the sciences of bacteriology and protozoology. At a young age, Lu Wenhoek lost his biological father. His mother later married painter Jacob Jans Malign. When his stepfather died in 1648, Lu Wenhoek was sent to Amsterdam to become an apprentice to a linen draper. Returning to Delft when he was 20, he established himself as a draper and haberdasher. He was married in 1654 to a draper's daughter. By the time of her death, in 1666, the couple had five children, only one of whom survived childhood. Lu Wenhoek remarried in 1671, his second wife died in 1694. In 1660 Lu Wenhoek obtained a position as Chamberlain to the Sheriffs of Delft. His income was thus secure, and it was thereafter that he began to devote much of his time to his hobby of grinding lenses and using them to study tiny objects. Lu Wenhoek made microscopes consisting of a single high-quality lens of very short focal length. At the time, such simple microscopes were preferable to the compound microscope, which increased the problem of chromatic aberration. Although Lu Wenhoek's studies lacked the organization of formal scientific research, his powers of careful observation enabled him to make discoveries of fundamental importance. In 1674 he likely observed protozoa for the first time and several years later bacteria. Those very little animalcules he was able to isolate from different sources, such as rainwater, pond and well water, and the human mouth and intestine. He also calculated their sizes. In 1677 he described for the first time the spermatozoa from insects, dogs, and humans, though Stephen Ham probably was a co-discoverer. Lu Wenhoek studied the structure of the optic lens, striations in muscles, the mouthparts of insects, and the fine structure of plants and discovered parthenogenesis in aphids. In 1680 he noticed that yeasts consist of minic globular particles. He extended Mosello Malpighi's demonstration in 1660 of the blood capillaries, by giving the first accurate description of red blood cells, thereby contributing to the history of cell theory. A friend of Lu Wenhoek put him in touch with the Royal Society of England, to which he communicated by means of informal letters from 1673 until 1723 most of his discoveries, and to which he was elected a fellow in 1680. His discoveries were for the most part made public in the society's philosophical transactions. The first representation of bacteria is to be found in a drawing by Lu Wenhoek in that publication in 1683. His researches on the life histories of various low forms of animal life were in opposition to the doctrine that they could be produced spontaneously or bred from corruption. Thus, he showed that the weevils of granaries, in his time commonly supposed to be bred from wheat as well as in it, are really grubs hatched from eggs deposited by winged insects. His letter on the flea, in which he not only described its structure but traced out the whole history of its metamorphosis, is of great interest, not so much for the exactness of his observations as for an illustration of his opposition to the spontaneous generation of many lower organisms, such as this minute and despised creature. Some theorists asserted that the flea was produced from sand, others from dust or the like, but Lu Wenhoek proved that it bred in the regular way of winged insects. Lu Wenhoek carefully studied the history of the ant, and was the first to show that what had been commonly reputed to be ants' eggs were really their pupae, containing the perfect insect nearly ready for emergence, and that the true eggs were much smaller and gave origin to maggots, or larvae. 
He argued that the sea mussel and other shellfish were not generated out of sand found at the seashore or mud in the beds of rivers at low water, but from spawn by the regular course of generation. He maintained the same to be true of the freshwater mussel, whose embryos he examined so carefully that he was able to observe how they were consumed by animalcules, many of which, according to his description, must have included ciliates in conjugation, flagellates, and the vorticella. Similarly, he investigated the generation of eels, which were at that time supposed to be produced from dew without the ordinary process of generation. The dramatic nature of his discoveries made him famous, and he was visited by many notables, including Peter I, the Great, of Russia, James II of England, and Frederick II, the Great, of Prussia. Lu Wenhoek's methods of microscopy, which he kept secret, remained something of a mystery. During his lifetime he ground more than 500 lenses, most of which were very small, some no larger than a pinhead, and usually mounted them between two thin brass plates, riveted together. A large sample of those lenses, bequeathed to the Royal Society, were found to have magnifying powers in the range of 52, at the most, 300 times. In order to observe phenomena as small as bacteria, Lu Wenhoek must have employed some form of oblique illumination, or other technique, for enhancing the effectiveness of the lens, but this method he would not reveal. Lu Wenhoek continued his work almost to the end of his long life of 90 years. Lu Wenhoek's contributions to the philosophical transactions amounted to 375 and those to the memoirs of the Paris Academy of Sciences to 27. Two collections of his works appeared during his life, one in Dutch, 1685-1718, and the other in Latin, 1715-22. A selection was translated by Samuel Hull, the select works of A. Van Leeuwenhoek, 1798-1807.